There are clever tricks you can use for your own maker projects. In addition, we are presenting ideas for 3D design in this video. When printing with filament, we need to take some unlikable manufacturing effects into account. But anyway, we are great fans because it's allowing us to realize self-designed housings for our electronics projects, which we are sharing on Electronics Unmasked. I can humbly say that some designs have even become a little stylish. So if you don't want to miss anything, just subscribe to the channel and of course we are always happy about likes. Let's get started with the tips. We can see the printing layers resulting from the manufacturing process using round nozzles and filament. And this gives us a kind of groove structure with a surface accuracy in the range of a tenth of a millimeter. We like the groove structure, which is why we take it into account when designing our parts. And the bottom of our parts depends on the support surface. It can be structured or smooth. You can take advantage considering this when constructing your parts. The surface of the last layer is looking a bit like carbon fiber material, but the structure is not so regular. Here comes our first tip. You can create a structured surface on two levels by making two parts that are joined later. We foresee pins and holes to position the parts precisely. This method worked really well for me, as you can see. Thanks to the pins, the ring is already sitting pretty tight, but we are using some glue anyway. For our Speedo project, we need slots with exact dimensions to get precise trigger points for our infrared sensors. We managed this using a smooth support surface. The 3D printed slots are actually having precise edges, allowing our Speedo to measure velocity and acceleration accurately. Our casings are usually consisting out of several parts. Ideally, you can only see the parts if you look closely. A dividing line that runs parallel to the print layers is almost invisible. We always try to take advantage of that in our designs. In contrast to this is a dividing line that runs perpendicular to the print layers. We try to avoid this because it doesn't look really nice. We are using a tongue and groove construction to join the housing parts. The parts are positioned precisely when they are plugged together, making the entire housing stable. Of course, we have to take the manufacturing tolerances into account using appropriate gap dimensions in the design. Depending on the part's size, we are designing a gap of 2 to 4 tenths of a millimeter. Due to the groovy surface, the parts are fitting tight together despite the gaps. Now let's take a quick look at PCB Base websites, the sponsor of this video. There is always something new to discover. You can find everything about PCBs. Wow, they are even having their own design team, an open source community platform where PCB files are shared and a sponsorship platform for creative projects. Always worth your clicks, check it out. You can drive wood or metal screws directly into a 3D printed base to attach an electronic circuit board for example. The holes may need to be widened with a drill so that the screws turn in easily. You run the risk breaking off the entire base when hefty driving the screws. A better solution is certainly threaded sleeves that are melted into the housing using a soldering iron. However, for our small electronic boards, a pretty simple method is sufficient. The circuit board is placed on the small stubs on the base and fixed with a drop of nail polish. That method is easy and super fast. You can definitely spice up your housing design using nice screws. 
I like the racing style character, which is underlined by the four large screws. And to avoid any problems, they are getting through the entire housing. The recesses on the back are slightly smaller than the outer diameter of the nuts, which automatically locks them in place once the screws are tightened. You want to open and close your casing frequently? Then this idea is for you. Instead of screws or clips, magnets are holding the casing together. For our small speedo housing, we only need four magnets, which are simply glued into the recesses provided. For the larger lap counter housing, we need eight magnets. We can open and close the casing really frequently, without wearing out threads or locking clips. We were trying extrusions, and I would like to share our experience with you. Text extrusions appeared ideal to me for labeling a housing. Our font heights are 10 and 4 mm, the extrusion from the surface is 1 mm. Now judge yourself whether that method could be a good solution for your project. The readability was pretty bad actually, which is why I painted the text extrusion using a black marker. And there is a strange deepening effect here that I don't understand at all. Do you have any idea what the root cause could be? And then write me in the comments. In case you want a really clean inscription, we recommend printing the letters in different PLA color and sticking them on. Our monster logo extrusion looks quite reasonable at a size of 25 mm. The connecting surfaces of the printed layers are not very strong mechanically. For example, a thin cylinder can break from the housing under load. In our design, the cylinders are relatively thick, yielding a large contact surface to the housing, which allows to absorb the tensile force of our cables. The surface is further increased by the filled up corners. And this is what the strain relief looks like when the cables are mounted. Clever, isn't it? A pointer on an axle needs a defined grip. You can't achieve this with a simple hole, because if it is a tenth of a millimeter too small, you won't be able to get the pointer onto the axle. And in case it's a tenth of a millimeter too wide, then the pointer has no grip and doesn't move. And that's why we added this slit. Applying that trick, the hole widens when the pointer is pushed over the axle and the cylinder generates a defined force that gives the pointer the right grip. My nephew had the idea and it works great. A luminous body plays an important role in lighting. Here is an idea for indirect lighting of a dial. We printed the ring out of white PLA material and the light sources are two white LEDs. And this is what the finished project looks like. And don't get confused, as my camera's aperture is adapting to the changing illumination. As a fancy feature, the lighting actually gets brighter when the pointer is reaching maximum deflection. In a second example, we make a 3D printed luminous body shine directly. We insert four white LEDs into the holes provided. On the finished gauge, the four light sources are causing a soft light pattern, which reminds me to the daytime running lights of a well-known German sports car. Are you guessing that model? You can actually achieve a beautiful design without having to further process the surface of the printed parts. However, we didn't find a method to avoid these seams where the printer is changing direction. Maybe you have an idea to avoid it? Write me in the comments. In any case, you could make the surface perfect using sandpaper and paint. There are many suggestions on YouTube about this. However, we haven't tried it yet. I hope you could take away some ideas for your own maker projects. The projects presented are all suitable for replicating and you will find them all on Electronics Unmasked.
Now stay tuned and don't forget to support the channel. See you soon in the coming episodes.